Hello and welcome into Esports Weekly, everybody. I'm Ryan Bailey. I'll be your host. As per usual, as we're getting ready to go into the final, very final time here at the SPL. This is our final Esports Weekly that we're going to have before Placement Week and the Smite World Championship. Craziness to think about, I know, but it's coming up quick. And so on this show today, we get asked all the time as casters, you know, what's going to happen at Worlds? Who do you think is going to make it through placements? Who's going to win the Smite World Championship? And up until now, I've been able to cop out a little bit. I've been able to say, listen, it's too far away. You know, uh, we don't have to think about that right now. Let's see what happens towards the end of the regular season. Well, that's already done now. And it's time for us to put some predictions up. We already have our predictions ready. We're going to see every single cast of predictions plus Zero is joining us here for this Esports Weekly. We've got his predictions on who's making it through placements and who's going to be crowned your Smite World Championship winner a little bit later on in the show. First, let's go over what happened last week. Final week of the regular season. Final week of the SPL. Space Station Gaming looked much, much better this time around. They went 2-3 and three up against what's Renegades, which is a huge surprise. They forced Renegades to Game 5. And then Renegades also got forced to Game 5 against PK. So what's going on with them? We'll have to wait and see. Splice did manage to lock up that second seed despite going all five again against PK. A big week for them in their doubleheader. They also looked pretty good. I think better than expected against two of the best teams in the entire world right now. Space Station Gaming coming away winning three sets in totality, or three games rather, in totality, is a good sign for that team despite not finding a set victory. Here are your final standings. For season six in the regular season, Rival is your number one overall seed. Splice and Dignitas round out the top three. Renegades only finish in fifth place, which is a little bit surprising, and set themselves up for a pretty interesting matchup later on in the World Championship bracket. PK in number four and E United at number six. Now here is what we're going to see at placement weeks. So we're going to start it off on Sunday with that Smite Console War semifinals, starting off with Hype Unit up against Ariel Arise, and then Rival versus Big Money. Now the winners of those two games will advance into the set, the actual placement bracket. They'll also play each other to determine the seeding. The winner of that console finals goes on to play out cold. The loser, Hype Unit. So a little bit of a difference there. But it, depending on if you win or lose, neither of those teams easy draws by my estimation. Now, this is double elimination. So even if your favorite team takes an early spill, fret not. There's still a chance for them to get towards that final round and ultimately make it in to the Smite World Championship at DreamHack Atlanta. Now, it's best of threes all the way through, except for the two sets that determine who attends the Smite World Championship. Winners finals and losers finals. This one on the back end of your screen right here, that is a best of five because the winner of that will end up playing into the Smite World Championship. Now, grand finals, so to speak, whatever team finishes on the top end of winners finals, gets their, punches their ticket, wins their best of five, will then go into a best of three against the winner of the losers bracket with a one game advantage. So we know it feels a little bit odd to have the grand finals be a best of three while the games before that were a best of five, but that's just kind of the broadcast constraints. And we felt like it was ultimately best to give the longest sets to the teams that had a chance to go to Worlds. That Grand Finals game will matter for seeding going into Worlds. It will matter quite a bit who's the seventh and the eighth seed, who will play against Rival or Splice. But ultimately, we want to make sure that the teams get the best chance to qualify for the World Championship and get in to this bracket right here. We already know some of our early matchups, Dignitas and Knights, those two teams prepping for one another right now. And then Renegades E United, a matchup we saw just a couple days ago, it feels like. And so you know that one has potential to really be a, a, a crazy set overall. That one should be a lot of fun. World's right around the corner, man. I cannot stress how close it is. So make sure, by the way, if you haven't, highresexpo.com is a place to get your tickets. Not a whole lot of time left, a whole lot of space left, because this, this tournament is going to be absolutely bonkers. We've got your preview for everything that's going to happen at placements and the Smite World Championship here on today's show. But first, we got to go over some of the top five plays. And this last week, we closed out hot, man. Let me tell you, it's not often we get plays of this caliber this late into the season, but we had a lot to choose from. Maybe the biggest bank we've had so far, but we're going to kick it off with Respawn's top five plays. Number five, of course, it's Scream. My man making plays here with Aurora. Their synergy was, has been sick so far this year. Solar Troll, Scream, and Aurora. The casual 3v4. See ya. 
by the way. Adapting exploded. That crit circuit working perfectly. That timing between Aurora and Scream, flawless. Really, really impressive. And speaking of timing, number four is the one play this week that had better timing, potentially. It's Cherio and Raffer. These two, man, they played so well together. That is so sick to teleport your Thor in range. They tried it again later in the game. It didn't execute quite as well. That that amount of timing, I can't even wrap my mind around. That, that, that blew me away when we saw it live on the broadcast. Number three on the Respawn Top 5 plays this week is also Raffer and Cherio, but this one's mostly Raffer, by the way. Look, you know Raffer is going to get in for the kills. You know, that's, that, that's obviously a, a big thing that he's got to be doing. Can't chase out Sino and get him right here. Nice little juke from Sino towards the end. But Raffer's blink is up in three, two, one. Yeah, uh, that's a double kill for him, by the way. Jeff Hinla and Sino both getting hit by the Furious Roar and finished off with just a sliver of HP. Nice double kill there for Raffer. Number two, uh, you might have heard of this guy. His name's Adapting, King Kennet. Uh, thought of as a really good jungler, but we weren't sure if Thor was really in the god pool. I'm thinking after watching this play that it might be. Maybe you should consider trying Thor out every once in a while. See, you know, he might win some games playing this god. Uh, yeah, turns out adapting Thor still real good. That hammer throw into the, 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 the clean double tap, no setup, because missed the wall, but that's fine, into the spin to kill Scream at the same time. That was uh, mwah, chef's kiss for him right there. And then number one, a pentakill at the SPL level. Or, some, or no, no, number two. I'm sorry. We don't, don't get to number one yet. Number two, we got to get there. Oh, no, we do have number one. We're going with number one. It's a pentakill. We're going to skip whatever we got because we already did number two, and I can't count. It's number one. It's fun baller. My man's with the pentakill, popping off on the Jingwei, ending the game against Space Station where it looked like Space Station might go up two to zero in this set. Fun baller with the penta. I believe that is the first one of the year. Right on time, baby. Week 13, final week of the regular season. Got to squeak it in there before we get towards playoff time and hopefully get some pentakills there at the placement stage or at the world stage, which is always a, a real sight to see. Shout out to Arco from last year for that, of course. This is going to be a big show. We hope that you enjoy it because this is uh, this is all of the, the setup that we've had all year long. It's all about this, the placement weeks and the world championship. Who's going to win? Find out as you watch Esports Weekly. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. I feel like I was just over here at the casual set, but we're back over here for Esports Weekly this time around. We're going to start off our discussion about placements and worlds and all the brackets and that kind of stuff by going by region by region, so to speak. And by that, I mean sort of platform by platform. And we're going to kick it off with the SCL teams as a whole and their chances at placement week. And to do that, we've got John Finch, we've got 
Tom F. Badinger joining us here. Guys, let's kick it off with the team that I would imagine we're going to have the most excitement about. Ariel, hype yeah, unit. Yeah, oh. uh, wait. Hi, <laughs> hype unit right away. <laughs> Look, this is the team, if any team is going to make a run, it's got to be these guys, right? Yeah, I think so, and it's not a knock against anyone else. I mean, to be honest, only half the teams are even going to get a chance, right? Because sure. they're going to play each other first, and then it'll just be those top two teams that kind of make into the part of the bracket that's double elimination. We get to keep going. But Hype Unit are far and away the best team, and I, I and I don't think that that's a knock against anyone else to say. This team has competed against SPL and looked good in the past. We credit Layers a lot with sort of shepherding in that Guan Yu jungle thing, too. <laughs> I think this Hype Unit squad has a real chance to make some noise here. Tom? Do you, uh, you feel the same way? Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm actually higher on this Hype Unit team than yes. a lot of people are. Um, it, it, we can be as polite as we want, but, I mean, Ariel or I is big money, just aren't in the same stratosphere as Hype Unit, and Rival is, like, sniffing the afterburners. Um, and it's just it there there is a clear winner in this platform, and a Hype Unit is the team. Hype Unit is the team that can beat out SML, arguably. Um, I don't think the other three have a, have a shot. I mean, th this team just has so much competitive experience, I yeah. think, is really what sets them apart. They're the defending world champions. I mean, you know that, that they have that ability to turn up at the highest level. And this is the highest level for them. This is the, the effective console worlds right here. Yeah. And then the ability to kind of move on and keep going against these PC teams. I mean, Ariel Arise, their opponents here in the in the console side on Sunday. Yeah, like what, what equates to semis, right, I suppose. Right, yeah. right, the console semis, so to speak. Ariel Arise not with their full five roster. I mean, they've got the, the kind of mainstays there, Kana, Sarpe, Ali, those guys are coming, but the duo lane's completely different. So as, as if that matchup wasn't going to be hard enough, now it, it feels like a, a completely impossible task almost. I know you're right, and they're going in against Titans, basically, so to yeah. speak, right? We compare some of the best players on Hype Unit to, to really good SPL and SML players all the time. Wolves over there in the solo lane. We very often talk about how strong that he's looked, but I don't even know that he's necessarily looked like the carry for them this last phase. I really do think that Layers, Chaotic Purpose, every name he likes to go under, I'm sure he'll change it by the time he comes here. I mean, I really feel like he's kind of stepped up and been the guy for this team. They lost Griffin over in the long lane, and yet they pick up Crimson over there, so that team continues to get even better, you might even say, in that regard, especially with how much you need mages played, so that helps them out a lot. I mean, it, the barometer for this team just isn't PS4 EU. It's, it's beyond that. Sure. I mean, Ariel Arise has done some good things this year, particularly in that mid-jungle with Ali Sarpe, that kind of combo, but ultimately, I think we're always looking going to be looking at Hype Unit and what they can do I know we're going to go over their match in particular in just a minute, but Tom, overall, you said you're pretty high on this team. How far could they realistically make it? I mean, listen, they, they, they let's assume they come out of uh, the, the world of the console worlds. Sure. You're, you're immediately looking, you're immediately, they're looking at uh, what could be, They'd be out, out cold. cold. Yeah. Right. And I think that's realistic for them to... It's a three-game series. I think it's realistic sure. that they can win. I'm not saying they're going to, but I think it's sure. much closer to a 50-50 than people. They're like, oh, Dimmy, pretty prime versus a console team. Clearly no problem. I think there actually is a conversation there. Layers is a meta-influencing jungler. Zapman shouts this guy out. Baronic is a mid laner carry player, depending on the meta, right? This guy is, is a guy that impresses uh, our, our professional players in the SPL. Yeah. These guys got a chance to be watched during that midseason invitational kind of run and and during that time and the pros were on twitter going who is this guy because he's he's playing out of his mind and obviously the time the team has had more time to work on on things and this will be the second time they're seeing this level of of, of play so i think it sure. is very realistic that they can beat out cold after that they go against sk gaming which is probably the hardest team in the entire placement bracket and that's tough but it's still a little, double a limb, baby. I think this is a world where, like I said, hype unit, there's a chance. There's, you're, so you're telling me there's a chance. A chance. Yep. Wait, one chance, please. <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. Of course, I love we, my wife. Of course, there's also a whole other console set. It's Team Rival going up against Big Money Esports. Big Money kind of uh, a, a big upset, frankly, for them I to would get say, here. Yeah. Over that Nemesis team in PS4 and A that has so much experience, guys like Zaxi, 
Jumpa, Matt Coy is on that roster. It would, but I would have almost here. said for sure they'd have been here, man. You oh, know I would have put money like, on for, it. Yeah, yeah guaranteed. It's a, I think it's a big surprise that big money is here in all honesty. I think they earned it. Um, I would Nemesis looked as if they weren't playing at their best. I can't know what went on, but that's sure. a team that I had expected way better from, if I'm being honest. And I thought they should have been able to make out of that region pretty cleanly. But big monies didn't sneak their way in. You know, they didn't no. trip and fall in by accident. This is a, a team that can definitely play really well. They're going against rival or really scary opponents. I think rival are, are are heavy favorites, maybe not quite as much as the other side, the Ariel Arise one, but I think I'm I'm easily leaning towards towards rival just based on how well they played. I think experience is a big factor in sure. that. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I'll, I'll kind of lean extra hard into it. I think that Rival are big favorites, and it it's it's not as close. It's Rival, I mean, Predators, Rapio, this is this is the squad. I mean, they don't have a Porsche Coast. And sure. I will forever be sad about him not showing up <laughs> to this land. shout out to the Juice Box Kid. Dude, you're kid right. Himself. They're losing a lot without Coast here, man. If that's uh, yeah. Coast on here, man, they might take hype in it. You know, I, I do think that, that they lose something with that. Sure. Yeah, but uh, you know this this big money team. You're right; they earned their way here, and I absolutely give them credit. But uh, I would have put big money on Nemesis being here. Sure. So, uh, nice. dude, we're, we're, Thanks, what, dude, what are we gonna play when we're doing our our console like reels and stuff? It's usually sad Matt Coys that we have. <laughs> oh, I know. You don't and even that, have the what chance. are we gonna do, man? That's that's a tradition at this. Do point. Do you think there was any <laughs> chance there was like a camera on him in that le- in their final <laughs> game against Big Money at home, like at his apartment, that we could just like <laughs> this girl in the room, footage, like yeah. yeah just just checking it out just so we could have that for the console reel. I mean, McCoy has been a mainstay, man, but, he but has not here for this year. I mean, Rival, we, we talked a lot about their chances really quick before we have to go to break, guys. Rival, we assume that they win this set. Any chance so. they make noise in the main bracket as well? I don't have them doing particularly well in mine. I have them dropping down to that lower bracket where they would then be playing even a weakened Sanguine. I think I'd still favor them, so I just don't see them going particularly far. Got to reiterate what John said. I think that Rival just unfortunately don't have the legs. Fair enough. All right. Well, guys, make sure you stay tuned to TRD Sports Weekly because next up, we're going to go over the minor league and their chances here at Placement Week. The darkness threatened to overcome our light. But a glimmer of hope escaped the shadows of the underworld. The messenger arrived here at the Ogun River, my home. I will not abandon those in need. The waters are patient and cleansing. My allies will know the strength of the tides, and our enemies will fear the flood. Welcome back to Esports Weekly. We just went over the console league teams and their shot, so why not go over this might minor league as well? This time, though, I've got Anatoly and I've got Hunu Man joining me on set. Guys, l- let's kind of go team by team here. I think that's the best way to do this. And we'll start with the top seeds in each region. And we'll start with Sanguine, number one. They are, they're the number one seed out of North America, but I don't know if you guys saw that their announcement on Twitter that they will not have Yarkor again. But this time they do have Haddix, who is a, a premier NA ranked solo laner. Take that for what you will. How do you think this that affects their odds here at LAN? I think that Sanguine replacing Yarkor with Haddix is a different change than using Oxy the last LAN, right? Because Oxy, I think, has more synergy. He was with Sanguine a little bit longer. Mm. Haddix hasn't played since about Season 5, 2018, SML Fall split with the ranked All-Stars for like a week or two. Mm. That was his last competitive play. So I don't really have much hope for Haddix. But being in the side lane... You're not expected to really do much in the early game. You're just kind of plug and play for those team fights. And I think Sanguine has to switch up their style up against these SPL teams. We saw how Armada was able to dismantle Rival. It wasn't by playing Rival's game or the SPL game. It was about being really down and dirty with guerrilla tactics. Degenerate, almost. Basically. Hindu or right? uh, <laughs> Go ahead. I'm really sad. Me too. Because I really think... And this is deep down just me being honest. I really thought they could go to Worlds this year. I think they had a real shot in the placement stage. Their performances through the year have increased in potency and skill level. They've shown their ability against some of the best teams in the world at this point. And pro players talk about them all the time. SPL level players are like, these guys are beasts. We're not going to get to see the full team. And we all know when subs get brought in at the last minute, it doesn't work out. It's a hard uphill battle 
it's unlikely they make it to Worlds, but let's just hope they have a good showing. Yeah, I mean, totally. Uh, your point was interesting to me because Oxy definitely has that synergy with them, but wasn't a solo laner by trade, not necessarily a, a high-ranked player. Yeah. Do you value that synergy more than than just a player with better mechanical skill? Because Haddock's a, a grandmaster player, top of the leaderboards very routinely. Do you think that's less important than just how well you work with the other four guys? I think it's more important to see how you work with the other guys because the way Sanguine ended the phase number two was very clean. Eight and two record at 16 and four with a plus 12 game differential record. And that's impressive in the SML side of things. And that means that Sanguine is very clean but up against SPL teams playing their meta, I don't know if Sanguine can execute being clean up against teams that are cleaner than them and more talented than them. So that's why I think they have to get down and dirty. Sure. On top of that, we've already seen the fact that the pro league, like the pro level now is all about communication as a team and team bonding and chemistry. Right. That's the important thing. That's a good point. All right, let's move on to the number one seed in Europe, which is Simplicity. This team has really dominated Europe, though didn't lock up first seed until a little bit later than we may have expected. Simplicity was here for MSI. They looked pretty good. Do you think that they've learned? Do you think they've improved from that time where they were here for the Midseason Invitational? It looked like they w did improve at first into phase two because they went five and one in their first six games, which was very impressive. But then in their last four games, they went two and two, losing to both Queso and Outcold Gaming. So I don't know how that's going to translate at the beginning of the placements. You want to finish with a good streak, not end it on a neutral one. Agree with Tolly there. You do kind of want to end it on a, on a good victory, but same time, the damage was already done, so they were pretty comfortable at that point anyway, so they sure. can sleep a little bit here. It's a big year for them. Um, I really look at the Simplicity Squad, though, as the future SPL pickup squad. These are, the, yeah. these are the guys that are on the precipice of joining the Pro League if things go their way. If a spot opens up, these are the sort of players on this team that you can look for to be the ones called up from Europe. Every single one of them has had their time in the sun before and shown they've got the ability. I think this is just another shot for them to go, hey guys, next year, remember I'm available for Pro League? And maybe show up some of their opposition. Makes sense to me. Now we move on to Hype Unit, the second seed in North America, a team that needed a little bit of help from Sanguine in order to make it. They got it, so they're arriving here. Guys like Benny Q, I mean, he was here last year with that Armada squad that made a run on Cope Baby's back. That team did a, did a lot of work at that placement stage. Nearly made it. Blink Chiron, though, right? Uh, Blink Chiron, yeah. You, you lose your game on I'm that. not going to forget that, right? Uh, Blink Chiron, he lost yeah. based well, off Blink Chiron. Yeah, we definitely remember that. We cannot possibly so, uh, forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Graham, you seem like you're high on this team. You really got some expectations. The, the players in the team, I think Mollusk is a fantastic player, and I think he, his time in the Pro League, he didn't really get the window that he needed to right. to really show off what he had. Benny Q is a solid performer, but on the day is where he can be suspect. Mm -hmm. Some days it's just whether it's a hit or a miss with him. I think the likes of Sops has been around a long time. These guys are almost the equivalent of what I was just saying about Simplicity, though, of them being a potential feeder team to the Pro League. But I think this is a more youthful looking team that needs more time to educate themselves about the high level of play and work on the comm situation more than anything else. They've got a shot at doing some work this this LAN. I don't think they're going to make it to Worlds, though. They're very similar to Simplicity, winning five in a row and then going two and three in their last five games. But this is team actually, uh, surprising to me, I think has more potential than Sanguine, the number one North American team, mm. because of the ability for Malice to kind of turn it on whenever, for Benny Q to really surprise his opposition. And I think that's how these minor league teams are going to win against the SPL teams, is that surprise factor. Yeah, okay. I think that's a good point. Th this is a team that has the ability to do that degenerate armada stuff yes. right the, 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 this is a team that's either going to win fast or lose fast yeah. and i think that's almost an advantage at this stage i, I think so as well it's going to be very much an sk game in sort of play style it's not like sk are really bad in the mid to late game but in the pro league they look that way when they start to struggle i think this this will be shown a little bit more obviously the early game will go well they'll get off to a good lead and potentially end the game if they struggle it's going to be over quick the other way. And then out cold gaming, the last team from the minor league scene. Pretty I mean, prime Dimmy. They're finally here. They finally got here. Yeah. Was it too little too late? I don't, I mean, no. I mean, it's Dimmy and prime on the same team. So you can't really count this team out between the pair of them. They've been to what? Four, four finals. finals? Yeah. yeah. And out of that 50% of wins. Yeah. So, uh, 
yeah, watch out for these guys potentially causing upsets for the lower end placement teams too. Outside of those two finalists from Worlds, I think a big factor is going to be a Frosty Act, right? Which Frosty sure. Act shows up? It's very it's similar point. to the Mollusk factor yeah. for Hype Unit, right? Like that jungle can turn it on at the drop of a dime. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I can't wait to see Pretty Prime and Demi back on the land stage. But they've got some tough competition at the placement week. They've got to go up against the bottom four SPL teams. We'll be right back here on Esports Weekly to go over their chances at placements. What's up guys, Titan Isaiah here, and I've got some huge news. Cross-platform play for Smite is coming to PlayStation 4. Starting with the Odyssey Underworld update, PS4 players will be able to play with and against players from across all Smite platforms. At launch, cross-progression and cross-monetization will not be supported. We're still working with our friends over at Sony on this, and we'll be sure to provide more updates in the future. This is a huge milestone for Smite, and we can't wait to welcome PS4 players into our cross-play family. For more information, head over to highresstudios.com slash crossplay. We'll see you on the battleground. Welcome back to Esports Weekly, everybody. I've got a couple more people joining me here on the casual set. We got Tom joining us here to talk about the SPL again and the best dressed man <laughs> on the set. It's Joachim Zeros Verngren. Did I nail that pronunciation? That is not my name, bro. Oh, so close. You so Joachim, close. yeah, there we go. Yeah, Getting that's all right. We're, we're trying our best here. Joachim. Joachim. Okay, I'm not even going to try. But my man's wearing a Steelers jersey, so we like that here on Esports Weekly. No, we Guys, don't. we're going to go over the bottom four SPL teams in, in their shot at making it to Worlds kind of team by team. We're going to start with the top seed, and that's SK Gaming. Everyone's talking about SK as the team to beat here at placements, at least kind of publicly. Zeros, do you think that SK is the best team playing in placement week? Yes, I think through the whole year, like the whole season, I think they've been the best team out of these teams uh, competing in this tournament for sure. And we see them this last week of SPL, they beat SSG, and SSG has been looking really good as of late. Mm -hmm. But I feel like SK was pretty dominant in that matchup anyway, so definitely the strongest team going in, I think. Tom, you've been an SK fanboy. I'm not even going to say Stan or advocate or anything else you've been straight fanboying over this team this year Yo, straight up run sk you know how we do it all day shout out germany shout out sk gaming shout out that man real talk <laughs> probably just by default the team to beat here i don't think you know if i if i have to come back to earth real quick i don't think that this team is like you know something to write home about realistically i think that they've had their struggles and i'm mainly looking at the fact that a lot of their investments in like the sam paul duo haven't really stood up on two feet so if you are looking to root for sk gaming i think that's kind of something to look at where uh trifecta last year same team different banner um they caught steam and it was very much a momentum moment Sam and Paul did crazy things. That could happen again. And getting these placement stages or, or games in are very good. I think they're definitely top of the crop, but there is a case to be made. And I want to give a shout out to um, LG possibly being up there as well. Yeah, I think we're going to go over them in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about Obey Alliance, a team that has looked good at times, admittedly, but other times looks a little bit lost. Minerals adjustment to the SPL level has been hot and cold. The big thing that stands out for me, Zero, is that this team set a meta kind mm. of with this no blessing you know boots oh, yeah. two sort of thing and then they kind of stopped doing it but you know that they've got the potential to, to change things up do you see that the potential there for obey i think that meta where like jungle to start boots before uh, assassin blessing and stuff was mostly made for like countering enemy supports invading because you could kill them you could punish them if sure. they would go for your speed buff right and i feel like supports unless it's aurora on herc have kind of stopped invading I feel like the early game is more safe now, so I don't think there's any point not going Assassin's Blessing anymore. So I mm. think that's probably why we can have stopped doing that. And how do you think that Obey's chances are at placements? Do you think they're a strong enough team to, to get to that top two mark? They could be. I think they're kind of weird because I feel like they're the team out of the bottom SPL team that has the most obvious weakness, I think. Which is like when Moswell does not play his gods that is good at i feel like this team does not look that good right but if moswell has his top pick like he's playing the Toph, the merlin the hera they do look really good so i think team's gonna look to punish moswell's god pool for sure 
and if he maybe have found some new gods he can do a lot of work with, then I could see them having a lot of success, but yeah. I think you're you're right to point those out. It really was that Thoth Merlin that determined how well this team has gone. Tom, do you think it's that simple? If Moswell has those gods, they have a chance? I think that there is something to be said about, about um, Wowie's ability to kind of stand up. Uh, but I, I do think it is a lot that has a lot to do with Moswell's ability to, to be the guy for sure. Uh, so I think that they always have kind of the, the second cord, you know, pull the parachute. Wow, he can just quadra kill you on Cupid. That can happen. Mm -hmm. And it will probably happen. But it's a three game series. And realistically, um, I think that they're too fresh of a squad to really make noise. Space Station Gaming, another team that's going to be here at Placements 1 that, as Zero's mentioned, has looked a lot better as of late. Barracuda moving to mid and insert a long lane has done a lot for this team, it's felt like. Tom, do you think it's been enough to give them a shot to make it to Worlds? You know, I, I want to say yes, and like the, the, the Matt Christopherism, right, the, 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 the anime plot armor for, for Jeff and Barra at Worlds, it's kind of real. So there's, it is so real. It's like that's kind of real. So there's something there. Realistically, if if, if this change, because I have been I've been calling for it for so damn long. If SSG had made this change, like a couple of weeks ago, where they got a chance to practice with it, and Andy got a chance to really experiment with that god pool in the long lane, I think you're looking at a much more different conversation. But. You know, again, the, the reality of the matter is is that they just haven't had enough hours in the gym, and it's not a knock about their their uh, work ethic or whatnot. They discovered the fix to the team in, you know, minute 88, sure. and there's 90 minutes to the football game. Like, I just think it was a little bit too late. Not too little too late. It was enough, but it was too late, and so I question if they have really had a chance to lock it down. Zeros, what do you think has been the biggest differentiator between what we saw from Space Station towards the beginning of Phase 2 and how they look now? Is it just the roll swap? It's probably the roll swap, but I think Sino has looked a lot better too. Uh, like, he's gone back to the Erlang, and like, those kind of goals, like, when he got MVP last year's Worlds, he was playing this kind of blink all in jungles, you know, like really dive in the backline hard. And I feel like he's come back to that a bit. And I think it suits him so much better. And he is like the hardest carry for that team in mm -hmm. my mind, I think. To that team to do really well, I think it's on Sino's back most of the time. Obviously, uh, Andy and Barracuda can carry too, but I think it's mostly up to Sino. If he can get rolling, and get momentum. I think they can do really good things. I've got to agree there. I think it's all. I think it's just all interconnected, and it's just got to work out with the jungle and the mid. And then finally, but certainly not least, LG, a team that a lot of hype is around. I mean, this is a team that, that took games off rival recently, won their set against them. Is LG legit? Could could they make the run zeros? Yeah, for sure. I think they're looking really good. I have them making it through the the placement week. I'm not mm. sure if they're gonna get first or second uh, spot, but sure. have been looking so good, re and they're. They have the role swap between uh, Snoopy and Joshi. Snoopy and Joshi, yeah. And like, they play it so well. No matter who's going where, they have really great successes. They never really look better if Josh is playing mid or Josh is playing ADC. It doesn't really matter. They look good either way. And Snoopy also has the god pool where, like, Anderson has been trying as well, playing a lot of assassins. But I feel like Snoopy actually has success with playing the set against the good teams and, like, doing a lot of work. So, yeah, he's beaten rival single-handedly yeah, with him. Yeah, because yeah, I think they have a lot of strong individual players, LG, and they're also a hard team to predict what they're going to do, which is like a big strength. I'm here to repeat everything that Zero said. I think I, this is the team that I, I have kind of like loved in my brain. Where when we look at the when we look at the uh, swap between mid lane and and long lane, you have two opposite god pools. And when you need the assassins and the Vulcans, then you go ahead and put Snoopy in the long lane. And when you need some more traditional stuff or the Thoth, that's where you put Joshi. That flexibility is 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 incredibly important right now in the game. Um, and Lazbra. <laughs> Every time I get a chance to say it, he's in his natural position. He lit the world on fire last year, and then somebody put him in the mid lane? That was the <laughs> dumbest decision on the planet. That was just stupid. Now he's in the jungle, and he's hitting home runs. This LG team didn't exist in Phase 1. Here they are in Phase 2. Kind of the SSG thing, not enough time in the oven, so to speak. But they are. If the question is, are they real? The answer is yes. It's going to be a lot of fun at placement weeks for sure with all those teams down there with the SML and with the SCL. But that leaves six SPL teams that we haven't talked about. Those are the teams already qualified for DreamHack Atlanta. We'll go over their chances to win it all right on their side of the break.
Welcome back to Esports Weekly, everybody. The six teams that have already made it to the Smite World Championships are waiting to see what happens at placements. But we already know a couple of those matchups. We've got a couple people here to talk about them. We've got Tolly and Hindu joining us here on the casual set once again. Guys, before we get into team by team, let's take a look at that bracket so we can know exactly what's going to be happening at the Smite World Championships. We already have a couple predetermined matchups, Dignitas and PK and Renegades and E United. And I want to start at the bottom there with E United. Tolly, you've been covering this team all year. You're the correspondent here for Esports Weekly. Do you think that they are playing the way they need to be going into this tournament? I don't think either team is really playing the way that they need to be. Both of those teams lost to Dignitas 0-3 from a struggling Dignitas. Uh, they were 3-4 and four before Dignitas before that set, and then they just won two in a row. But to be fair, it was kind of like poetic justice because United Renegades were the only team that beat Dignitas in Phase 1, so they kind of returned the favor. But I think up against each other, it should be a very dynamic matchup because they replicate each other very well. And at the ending of phase one, they kind of replicated their middle strategy and how the jungler rotated around the map. So it could go to a full five game set. This this set is really going to come down to if United turn up or not. I yeah. think realistically we've seen the best and worst of United throughout the year. Um, lately, you know, when, when it looks like they care, they care. It, they have this play style of like, if they lose, they're like, oh, well, whatever. But when they win, they're like, yeah, we're the greatest, see? I'm like, that's not going to fly at Worlds, you know? We'll see what team we get. I mean, theoretically, this should be the most they care, well, right? Similar to what I was saying earlier in the minor league section, right? We've got Emily, who's won two world championships on this team, and Kalas and Ice Ice Baby, who've been to two finals before. But not only that, you've also got Benji. On top of that, so this yeah. roster has World's Finals experience. The problem is, will they bring it together at the right time? I, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for them, though. I mean, Renegades and the United just played recently, and that was a, a fairly close set towards yeah. the end, but the very beginning, Renegades was, was kind of blowing them out of the water. Do you think that that recent set between these two squads gives either team a slight edge? I don't think so, honestly. They're going to be preparing for a, you know weeks in advance. There's a lot of time to adjust their strategies. On top of it, I think the main focus for both of these teams is going to be how the mid laners play against each other. Between Dardas and Big Man Tings, they have such a diverse god pool for the both of them that they're going to cater around their mid all-stars to make sure that they're comfortable, transition to that mid game, and then just pop off. Honestly, if we get to the quarterfinal stage and it's 1-1 one, one tied up, I just want that to be the match. It's Big Man versus Dardas, winner takes all. Not Unheard versus is on here because that's just not fair to big man to be fair it's, be, it's pretty good maybe like I don't know Ra versus Ra something like that something down the middle that's Nox versus more Nox big mans. Nox versus Nox there we go that's the and that's more what do you mean that's more dart is of course it is you gotta find something oh, I don't even right. know if there's anything in the middle between these two guys yeah I mean Renegades they, they came out of the gates super hot after MSI didn't lose for weeks Feels like they've cooled off a little bit are you concerned at all because they were the world's favorites just a couple weeks ago and I don't know that they still are I'm not worried about it whatsoever because this is the roster that I expected to cool when they needed to cool to make sure they're ramped and ready to go for Worlds, make people start to sleep on them a little bit. This is the team that steps up for the big events. MSI, they did it. They won MSI, their regular season. They had their ups and downs through that as well. Don't be surprised when this Renegades team comes in all guns blazing and probably throws another strat or two out there that we've not seen just yet. Now, a team doesn't have to end perfectly to get, like, world's record. We saw what Renegades was able to do in Phase 1, where they exactly. ended 5-4, and four, and then they went undefeated at MSI. So I still have a lot of hope for Renegades at Worlds. I just think that they definitely need to clean up some of their mistakes because it's been very silly towards the last couple of weeks. Yeah, Renegades uh, may have lost a little bit of focus there towards the end, I agree, but I think they're going to be locked in come World's time. And then, of course, we've got Dignitas and PK facing off on the top half of the bracket. This one, I mean, Huge. you were talking about you don't know what version of United you're going to get. What version of Dignitas are you going to get? But they are going to guess PK, and then I, when I put this, I'm going to make this very clear. I think the PK squad have done well to get to where they're at right now. But Roe versus Variety should not oh, be no. broadcast for safety reasons. I just I of think it. that's a little bit brutal. Unless they're going to give him Jormungunder every game, I think Variety's going to have a lot of fun. And even then, if he gets Jormungunder every game, I'm expecting Variety shuts it down somehow. That is, I haven't even thought about that matchup, man. That yeah. is brutal. That's what, that. that's what it comes down to. Like on yeah. a base level, there is a chance that when we get to the land world stage, that Kyivo and Chicks have had their issues in the past. 
I don't think it'll matter because Variety and Ataraxia will just bring them up that extra level. And Hori win too. He's got a lot to prove this year. There's two factors in this matchup that I'm looking at. And outside of Row, it's losing zeros more than it is gaining Row, right? Because the same way adapting an Emilcee lost to Yamin at the end of Season 5, it basically crippled their chances at Worlds. And I think talent-wise and synergy-wise as well, like, yes, Row might seem to fit in a little bit more with the PK style, but I just still don't think it's enough to get them Worlds win. And then the second factor was the recent matches between Dignitas and PK in Phase 1 and Phase 2, both of them go into Dignitas. Yeah, I do want to point out as well, I mean, Row came in very late, in, in my opinion, towards this season change. There's not enough ramp time there. Let's talk about ramp real quick towards Aninsta and SSG. It's taken him a while to adjust because he went jungle, mid, hunter roll, right? Yep. He's had to have ramp time and he's got it. Row is not in the same spot. Dignitas are looking strong here. I mean, th this matchup, I think, is going to be a ton of fun. PK has looked better than I think we all thought they would yeah. with this roster swap. I think a lot of credit deserves to go to Row and a Deathwalker for looking fairly comfortable in mid. But mm -hmm. in, in their last sets this last week, Deathwalker had a couple games where he looked okay, a couple games where he looked a, a really, really off. Vote's Vo been really consistent for me, and I think the big two that need to step up for this PK roster, and it's a lot of responsibility, it's going to be a Millsy and Adapting. And I don't mean they need to pull their weight because they're doing that. They need yeah. to pull everybody else's weight as well. And that might just break their backs, I feel like, in terms of Deathwalker still ramping to mid and row in the solo lane. This is a lot of lifting those two need to do, and we may just get the best Adapting and, of course, a Millsy we've ever seen because they have to do this. Yeah, I agree. If the, if PK is going to make a run, it's going to be on the back of those two players. I completely agree with you there. That leaves the two top seeds, Splice and Rival. Splice will face off against the winner Free. Uh, of the, the placement week. Splice, is, Splice might be the best team right now, I, I think. I don't care who comes out of placements. You're, they're both getting stopped this first round. They're both done. Rival and Splice are going to come out flying. There's no chance. Like, even whoever it was, like, no way. Not a chance. You say that, but then I'm thinking back to MSI with how Rival was first seed and or second seed, I forget which one, and lost to Armada right off the bat. Two shenanigans, two jank Agreed. that they weren't prepared for, but to be fair, like you have to be prepared for everything as yeah. an SPL and, team. And I would agree with that, totally, apart from the fact that this just happened to that rival squad. So they're not going to yeah. let it happen again. But so you know. And they didn't have a good world last year either. They lost in quarters to Trifecta. That's, That's true. true. So it definitely seems like this roster out of rival seems to struggle, or at least the PBM and Panic Cat factor yeah. in Season 5. But going back to Splice, the first place winner out of placements, everyone has SK coming out of their S first. Sure. And if that matchup is going to occur... Who knows what's going to happen, right? Like Aurora versus Neoma, these two supports. Volatile. You just don't know what yeah. you're going to expect out of the supports. I think that's a good point, it's man. True. That's That could be a really fun matchup for sure. They're all going to be sick. They that's are. what's so awesome about the SPL this year. All the teams are really, really good. And it's going to be really, really hard to predict. But we're going to have to do it. In fact, our world's predictions from every caster and every analyst working here at the studio coming to you on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. What's up, guys? Titan Isaiah here, and I've got some huge news. Cross-platform play for Smite is coming to PlayStation 4. Starting with the Odyssey Underworld update, PS4 players will be able to play with and against players from across all Smite platforms. At launch, cross-progression and cross-monetization will not be supported. We're still working with our friends over at Sony on this, and we'll be sure to provide more updates in the future. This is a huge milestone for Smite, and we can't wait to welcome PS4 players into our cross-play family. For more information, Head over to highrestudios.com slash crossplay. We'll see you on the battleground. Welcome back to Esports Weekly, everybody. It's been a crazy season, and one where we say it's been harder than ever to determine who's going to win week to week of the regular season, let alone when it comes to LAN and the Smite World Championships. But that's why they pay us the big gems. we got to get the predictions out there. And to do it, we've got Zeros, we've got FDOT, we've got John Finch joining us here again. Tom, you're the senior member here on the couch. so That's we're true, gonna, man. We're going to let you... 
Go ahead, Finch. Was were you gonna go in threes there? Like, yeah, you know, you've got age, wisdom, and experience all coming your way. Tom F. Badinger, few no more. What you got, buddy? Predictions time, baby. Let's start <laughs> off with what we might see at the placement stage. I mean, a, a lot of teams. I can already guess that we're gonna see an SK Gaming on your side. That that you think they're gonna make it out of placements. But what what else do you think is gonna happen? You got any extra pre bold predictions for us? Hot steaming hot takes right off the stove. Yes. Hype unit. The console hype unit. Coming out with SK Gaming. No, you do As not. in second in the whole bracket? I th with a, Because there is <laughs> And you a, do mean second, right? Right. Because there is a double elimination, I think that there, there, there is a chance. Now, this is the safe. This oh. is the safe. All right. This is what you think. Yeah. Okay. Thank LG. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> but, you asked me, but you asked me for my hot take. And so this is the safe bet. Uh, SK Gaming and LG, we'll talk about Renegades later, um, coming out of placement stages. But I realistically think, with a double elimination bracket, that Hype Unit Boys, Baronic, Layers, that whole squad, I think they could come out next to SK or LG. So you think SK is a team that we will almost certainly see at the World Championship almost coming certainly. out of placements. And then you've got Renegades winning the World Championship. We're going to do this prediction by prediction, so we'll go over that real quick. Do, are you at all concerned with the way they played recently? Do, did that give you any pause w with your prediction? Less about the way they played recently and more about the way Splice has played recently. Splice is on fire. Scream is going out of control. This is a dope this is a dope team. And I think that Splice just might have that, that je ne sais quoi to scoop them up into the victory. Like what happened last year. Like, yeah. it does, tell me if this sounds familiar. Splice shows up at the beginning of the season, lackluster. Middle of the season does something kind of weird that they know that's not going to last forever. Moving into the summer house, picking up Baskin for a week or two. That somehow catapults the team into a good good state of mind, and then they wipe things up at the end of the season. Things go their way, and then they win a world championship. Literally the script for last year. So I think that's a little scary with my Renegades prediction, but... There's two things. Yeah, you had me confused. I was like, <laughs> did you pick Splice? I'm, I'm glad you somehow brought that around. And, and so I think that's a little scary with my Renegades prediction, but twofold. One, I've been saying Renegades for a while, so i got to stick to what I said originally. Yeah. I'm not here to flip-flop. But two, perhaps more importantly, um, I, I, I give a lot of credit to Renegades to understanding, identifying new metas and new gameplay elements, and I think that that's what happens at Worlds, and that's what they'll be able to do. All right, Zero, it's your time to shine, man. Your prediction time mm -hmm. when it comes to placements. Who are the two teams you think are making it out? I think SK, definitely. I think they're just ahead of the rest of the pack, especially the SPL teams. And then LG, obviously. I, I talked about LG earlier. I think they're a really hard team for enemy teams to like draft against, and they have a lot of individual talent as well, same as SK. Like, I feel those two teams, I do think SSG and Simplicity have a chance as well. Mm. I do predict those two, uh, these two teams to make it through, but definitely Simplicity and SSG, I think, could possibly make it as well. Yeah, I agree. I think those two teams are ones you have to watch out for, but we'll go over my predictions later on. And then you've got Splice winning the world championship. Yeah. You feeling the same way that Tom did, except for you actually wrote Splice <laughs> down. You know? Yeah, exactly. this could be a really easy yeah. Splice pitch for you because Tom just did one instead of pitching yeah. Renegades. That's nah, great. Yeah, <laughs> I really talked to. I think Splice has been the most consistent team through this whole year since they had the roster swaps. Like they've been looking good always, and I do think in so many roles, I think you can. There's a good argument for saying they have. The, like I think Cyclone Spin is the best dual lane player. I don't know if you can call it Hunter player anymore. Sure. I do think Scream, as of late, has looked like the best jungler as well. Agreed. Solo, solo yep. troll has looked insane since he joined SPL as well. So they have so much strong individual, and as a team, they play so well as well. But I think Cyclone Spin just have the edge on everyone else, and you know how much impact this Fed Mages or Fed ADC and dual lane have in the game. So I just think Splice has this. As long as they stay away from Anubis ADC, right? That's uh, even that, you could probably make that work as well. <laughs> hey, they're, they, they're like one and two on it, so it's not that bad, I suppose. Finch, how about for you? Who are the teams that you're, you're picking here? All right, Finch. so I, I'm, I'm along with everyone else in terms of thinking that it's SK and LG that are going to make it out. But I don't know. I think LG have a good chance to take and make it out as the number one seed. They've got... I don't know. I think they might be on the easy side of the bracket. I have them playing Hype Unit SML 
and then if they win that, it's simplicity, and then it's SK from on the top side of the bracket, and then they're in if they win that matchup. And I think they just got a, a path where they can definitely make it through. This team looks like they've been steadily improving. They really needed Ionic in the support role to kind of step up. He's done that for them. They still have Snoopy, which I feel like somehow we undersell on a regular basis. Yes. That dude's nuts at this game, and he's, I think, the big reason why that Armada team was such a problem for Rival back at MSI. So sure. I, I think that they have a, a lot to bank on with Snoopy for them, and then obviously SK have throughout the entire this phase been that in-between team. You know how like when we break into six and four, what we really mean is five, one, and three, mm, right. in all honesty. So that I think that's where SKR, they're just ahead of everyone else. And then I do agree, if I had to make it a top four, it would be Space Station and Simplicity for me as those next two teams. Before we move on to the Worlds thing, Tom, you, you looked like you wanted to say something there. Yeah, I, th- I, I think that realistically, the the like five, one, and three conversation, the that's a real conversation. But sure. I, think the re- I think LG has improved more more than a lot of us are selling them out for. Agreed, yeah. The idea that it was SK and the other three was true up until like week number 10 maybe. Sure. But now, maybe even before that, now I really think SK and LG are a lot closer, yep. maybe even neck and neck. And that's a scary part. Everybody's sitting here like SK number one. Don't be surprised when LG comes through and does it. Yeah. I agree. I mean, SK did beat LG in the most recent set, but that was a while ago. Finch, for your world champion, I believe you had Splice, correct? Yes. And I've been, um, so I guess my job, I should talk about Renegades. No, um, so <laughs> to, no, for Splice, I mean, I think that I think that Zero's kind of tapped on it. As good as Cyclone Spin is, and he is a huge part of why they're why I have them as my winners. I think it's Scream, man. Yeah, I have no clue what this kid's gonna play on any given day because I don't know that he does. I think he just plays. Well, hasn't gotten <laughs> his vision yet. Exactly right. <laughs> I think he sits down, he locks in, and he goes, "Man, what do I really just want to beat these kids with today? Maybe Bastet or something like that, right?" And, and then he plays it at a really high level. He builds to do damage. He knows his function within the team. And then Venenu too. I mean, I feel bad because I do think he's kind of in a role player spot on this team. But who would you want doing role player more? than him. He does it so well for the squad week in and week out, and then he'll pop off when you need him to. Yep. Splice are just looking scary. I agree, man. I, I can't I can't argue with you on any point. I think yeah. Splice is looking great. Guys, thank you for sticking your necks out there with your predictions. Happy but to do it. Of course, we've got to get Hindu Man and Tolly in with their thoughts on the other side of the break. Great job, John Finch. <laughs> the darkness threatened to overcome our light. But a glimmer of hope escaped the shadows of the underworld. The messenger arrived here at the Ogun River, my home. I will not abandon those in need. The waters are patient and cleansing. My allies will know the strength of the tides, and our enemies will fear the flood. Welcome back to Esports Weekly, everybody. We already got a couple of our casters' predictions. We still got a couple more in the bank. We've got Anatoly and Hindu Man joining us here on set. Tolly, we'll kick it off with you, sure. because you, I think, might have one of the spicier predictions here. I definitely do. For placement week let's talk about it man what who do you have coming out of placement so i have sk coming out of first sure and then i have uh space station gaming coming out of second place and then for worlds i have dignitas winning worlds wow Ooh. yeah this is one totally. that no one matched i don't think the dig bit is the surprising thing for me i can well, kind of see the i have SK, sk first sure space sk Station's, first space station second yeah, apologies on that but overall roughly the same result Let's start with with the space station prediction. What changed your mind on the space station team? So between Barra and Jeff, they have made it to every single world. And Sir only missed out on one world. I think it was season four. And this team has been getting better and better week after week. And I think they're finally figuring themselves out. And when it all matters the most, I think the collaboration of these players can make it work. Now, I'm not saying they're going to win Worlds, but I think between all the competition and placements, they should at least be able to qualify. Plot armor is a strong thing. It's a good Hindu script, man. isn't it? Yeah, Hindu man, it's I'm looking really at you. a really good script to have that team do the impossible and make he it. He wrote it. Yeah, weird. Plot armor is... Uh... I, you know, like, if they do it, that's a great story. <laughs> and a lot but of credit moment, to whoever wrote it. But at the moment, it's definitely just a fable, which yeah. is obviously a type of story, but it's definitely... 
they, they are my third chance at making worlds this year. Okay. Right All right. Now. Well, we'll get into your predictions. I get to Holy's point. Sure. All right. We'll get to your predictions in a minute. We got to talk about this Dignitas one. I mean, another yeah. team that looked dead in the water pretty mm -hmm. recently. They move Ataraxia back to long lane, put Herwin back in mid. We're seeing more mages there. It looks to have revitalized the team. And you think it's enough for them to win the world championship? I think so. The only teams they lost in phase one, two were E United and Renegades. And then they end phase two by beating both of those teams in a clean 3 0. And it was very dominating of a performance. And between the world's history of winners, it was a North American team, COG. Then it was Epsilon Energy, two European teams, and then two North American teams between E United and also Splice. So it's time for a predominant European team, Heroin being the only American on this team, to win it all. And that's why I think who's going to win it is going to be between Dignitas and Renegades. And going back to their head-to-head -head record, I was kind of thinking it should be Dignitas. Mm. Wait, what's the semifinal matchup you've got in the upper bracket? Then? It'd be Rival Dig, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. No. Yeah. It's Splice, I thought, in the upper bracket. Splice is bottom half. It's it's yeah. Rival and then the, the okay. loser of placements up so against would, winner of Dig Oh, so Dig it PK. might be Renegades versus Dignitas in the finals then. That's what yeah. I'm predicting. Yeah, yeah. Dig, Dig yeah. Renegades would be finals. I'm only asking that because I'm like, wow, that's a, oh, perfect. That's a big matchup to have. Rival versus is sure. in the semis. I mean, that's what I expected anyway. Yeah, well, that's kind of the expected result if you just go by seeding right now. Shout outs to T and the boys back there and getting that bracket back yeah. up. And Jennifer, of course. Hindu man, what about your predictions? How, how are you feeling? For it's these? always awkward, right? Because, like, I don't want to give it away. I've worked all year on this and I've already started next year's now. Well, I know, but you got to just feign some ignorance, be all like, right, oh, yeah. I have no um, idea who's going to win. I don't know who's going to make it out of placements, but SK and LG look likely. Yeah, I think those are those are fair assessments. Yeah, I believe all three of Zeros, Tom, and Finch had had those two teams yeah. coming out, and, and you do as well. Realistically, that's that's the way it's going to be. I think SSG is that third team that could potentially make it, so don't be surprised by an upset there. I would my my heart of hearts wanted Sanguine and SSG because the stories would have been really good. Though. That would have been that would have been pretty but crazy. Then again, sometimes when you write a script, you you just you got to let it happen and let teams lose you know? right, I'm getting a little bit concerned because we don't have the graphic up yet and I just heard from production in my ear to ask you about your world's winner and I don't know if I'm going to like this answer I don't want to tell you <laughs> well you don't have to because the graphic will no it will <laughs> what uh, you'll have to find out the world champ like guys there's a problem with the graphic can we that's get like that that's like finding out the last season of Game of Thrones was going to suck and then just not watching it because of it you know like I'm not going to do that you can be angry. Wait, angry it's going to suck? Followers. Is that what you're telling me? Now I'm worried. Well, I mean, like, clean sweeps all the way. <laughs> oh, no. Cast a curse means it won't happen. Ah, Remember, genius. genius. Yeah, good work by Long you time. right there. No, really, Wills, Wills is a coin toss between quite a few teams. When I say coin toss, it's like a, a six-sided, it's a dice. Yeah. I guess a six-sided coin. I was going to say well, a dice. Um, I think anyone apart from the placements teams could technically step up and win it. Realistically, I think we're looking at a Renegades, Splice, Rival, Dig, situation. Rival, Splice, Renegades, Dig. Yeah. Are your top four. Open net, right? Wow. So you're predicting one of half of the teams yep. going to the Smite World Championship. A quarter. Cop out. Will win the Smite World Championship. Sure. Hindu, remember when we talked about this show yesterday? Now, if I if I had say what the scoreline is going to be in the finals and the two teams in it, and I am correct... Everyone's going to fully believe that it is scripted then. All right, and that's ahead. my concern. Go ahead. I can't do that. Why not? Because it's probably going to be right. Well, then say it so it won't be a problem. No. What do you I'm mean? I'm playing it safe. You know, when we, we talked about the show yesterday, and we were, I was like, hey, man, you got to put your predictions in. And you'll be like, well, what about the whole script thing? And fine. I was like, J you know, fine. we'll play it you off. It? It'll be fine. You want it? Yeah. Do you really want it? I do. Renegades up against Rival in the final. It will go 3-1. I'm not saying the winner, though. Okay. I will that accept good enough? Th yes, I will accept that. 3-1, Renegades versus Rival. Listen, to, to whatever, if, if it's Rival and Renegades in the finals, and one of those teams is up 2-0, to zero, it is on the other team to then lose to make Hindu Man wrong. That is, it's not, it's not me who makes the rules, but we got to put him in his place. Because sure. otherwise, he's going to talk about this clip forever, and we'll never hear the end of it. I can't have I can't have that. I, I think you get upset by the fact that I tell you what happens, and then it happens. You're like, wait, what? And I'm like, well, I told you. You know what yeah. we're supposed to do there. Yeah, uh, that does make. I tried to I avoid you. this situation in the first place by saying, let's not do that. But you put us in this boat now. I hate it when mom and dad fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Just sitting in the middle. Sorry, Anatoly. We'll uh, we'll cut it off for now because we got to get ready to close the show here on Esports Weekly. My predictions for the Smite World Championship on the other side.
Welcome back to Esports Weekly, everybody. I'm back in my own private desk area. I don't have to deal with any of these nincompoops over there anymore. And so it's time for the real world's predictions, my world's predictions. Now it's a little bit awkward because my predictions exactly match that of two other people that we had on the desk. I am of the same mind of Zeros and John Finch. I think the two teams coming out of placements will be SK and LG, and I think Splice will be your world championship winner. We talk so much about getting hot at the right time, and that's what's so important for these world championship runs. It's, it's playing well at the right time, understanding the meta, having things fall your way, like... I don't know, having your brand new solo laner who isn't super accustomed to the SPL level quite yet get one of his best gods tier buffed through the roof right before the Smite World Championship. I don't think that necessarily hurts that team. Maybe it's a god that you've been playing a lot of recently, Kuku Khan, going from the bottom of the tier list towards maybe the top for Venenu. It's your jungler returning to form where he was the premier jungler in a region, now potentially the premier jungler in the entire world, and he's already won a world championship. And oh yeah, if you're not convinced that Scream's the best player in the SPL right now, well, your counter-argument is probably that it's Cyclone Spin, the long laner for that team. Aurora has been a Hercules one-trick all year, and it's been a one-trick because no one else, the, there's no follow-up. There's no encore. You don't need anything else because he's been winning games on it by himself at times. I think Splice has the best chance. If I had to pick someone else to back it up, I'd probably say Rival. Renegade's... I'm excited about their chances, and I, and I would have said Renegades a couple weeks ago, and it's not that they've lost recently, or, or won less convincingly necessarily. That doesn't concern me a whole lot. I, I am convinced that this team has stuff in the pocket that they have not shown. It, they've just done the same thing week in and week out, and there's no way that's what they're sitting at home practicing. Raffer, Cherio, those guys are too experienced and too smart to have that be their practice. But that's the thing, it's practice and you don't know that it's necessarily going to work out. You don't know that the meta that you've been working on is going to be the meta that ends up happening at Worlds. And so I'm just a little bit hesitant to go with Renegades right now. Plus, Nika, Cherio, those guys haven't been on the world stage a whole lot. Believe they went a couple years ago, but only got into the very first few rounds. This is starting in the quarterfinals. It's a lot of extra pressure on this squad. This is a talented team. I don't. I wouldn't fault anybody for picking basically anybody that's on the world's bracket right now. I just don't know that I'm ready to say anybody else but Splice. I do think Splice will run it back to back and be your world champion here for season six, which would be quite the capper of a season for them. I mean, the turmoil they have faced, really the turmoil that a lot of teams have faced so far here in season six. There have been a lot of changes coming into this year. Everyone here living in Atlanta, Georgia, living with your teammates is vastly different than getting an argument with them and then just disconnecting from Discord and going to get a bowl of cereal by yourself, you know, to blow off some steam, whatever you got to do. Now you've got to live with your team. And I think that we've seen these teams really go closer and closer together and it's resulted in unequivocally the best level of competition we have ever seen in the SPL. And we say that every year, because it's true every year, right? Every single year, these teams and these players improve and improve and improve, and they get better and better at their jobs. They understand the game so much better. That's why we say this season, Space Station Gaming, the 10th seed overall, would probably sweep a team like Cog Prime, the team that won the World Championship in Season 1, because these players know so much more. But the, the difference in Season 4 to Season 5, and then Season 5 to Season 6, is astronomically different. And I think that's the culture that has been developed here. It's the ability to play every single game at LAN. It's the ability to learn what your teammates are like, not as a player, but as a person. And I think that that's going to create an even better season seven, season eight, so on and so forth, as we move deeper and deeper into the SPL's history, man. This, this year's world championship is going to be explosive. And if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, HireusExpo.com, in order to come and watch, you're messing up, as far as I'm concerned. This year at DreamHack Atlanta, the, the level of play we're going to see, the level of just outright mechanical execution is going to be better than ever in my mind. And I hope the crowd is there and ready to, to match that level. The World Championship, if you've never been to a live esports event, 
it's it's better than anything you would you would think it's gonna be. It's it's a lot like a sporting event mixed with a rock concert. It's that same sort of feeling of camaraderie you get with sports and that level of excitement, but the the constant electric energy that you feel in that building is is, is completely different than anything else. It is going to be a blast. Truly is so much fun. So I hope that you will join us there at DreamHack Atlanta for this Might World Championship. Final standings of the regular season. Can't believe we're saying it. It's already here. Rival is your number one seed throughout season six. They finish at 14 and four. Both Splice and Renegades sit at 13 and five. But of course, Renegades able to do pretty well overall. Dignitas to toss PKE United. Your other teams auto qualified in Smite World Championships. SK Gaming coming in right underneath the bubble. They sit at 8 and 10 in a rough year for Space Station Gaming. Only two set wins for them in all of Season 6. But a lot of optimism. I'm going to stay away from the word hype surrounding that team right now. And I think that's fair for me to do. But optimism is the name of the game right now for Space Station Gaming. Feels like they might have a real shot to make it to the Smite World Championship. It's going to be tough, though, because look at this bracket. They're going to face off against Sanguine as their first game. Now, Sanguine not at full strength, not with the Arcore, but they do have Haddix, who is a very, very good player. I'm excited to see what he can provide in a competitive setting. And then they'd have to go up against SK Gaming, most likely, depending on the outcome of their set as well. Of course, you got to keep your eye on Obey and Simplicity. That one's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to a potential Hype Unit and Luminosity set up there in that round as well and of course it is double elimination so you got another chance even if your team loses for them to make it in again best of threes all the way through except for winners finals and losers finals because those are the two games that determine who comes to this bracket high res expo at dreamhack atlanta the winner of this whole thing now winners finals losers finals that means there is a grand finals that will be a best of three with a one game advantage given to the team that came out of winner's side and the winner of that gets the honor of playing Splice. Oh, don't worry. If you're the loser, you get to play Rival. Good luck, man. This is the most stacked bracket we have ever had at a Smite World Championship. It is going to be really, really fun. We really hope you guys are going to enjoy it and be able to, to actually join us at the Georgia World Congress Center November 15th through the 17th. I want to thank everyone who, who took time out of their day, out of their year, to watch Esports Weekly. It's crazy that this is our last show before the Smite World Championship. I do believe we will have one to wrap it up, but with placements going on all next week and then the week after that is Smite World Championship, unfortunately, this is the last time we'll be joining you from the Esports Weekly desk until we have crowned a winner for the Smite World Championship. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all of the correspondents who worked very hard for us all year. Thank you to Tyler, our producer back there, Jennifer Graphics, and Alex, the, the guy doing replays. Everyone who's worked so hard on the production side to make an idea that we've wanted to make work here at the, the studio for a long time a true reality, and we hope you enjoyed it all year long. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at Placement Week. Peach it. <laughs>